Good afternoon once again to all our friends from the media. Welcome to the second round of press conference for today. As mentioned, the inequality or addressing inequality is high in the agenda of APEC and of course the Philippines. Um, achieving inclusive growth in FACTA is uh, what's on the minds of uh, the, pro the proponents of the Cebu Action Plan when they were drafting the roadmap. And uh, to talk more about the issue of addressing inequality, we have a very special guest for the day from the World Bank. Mr. Axel von Trotzenberg, Vice President for East Asia and the Pacific. So uh, we are going to ask Mr. Trotzenberg for a brief opening statement and then uh, we will open the floor to questions. Thank you very much. Uh, good afternoon. It's a pleasure to be here. Um, it's also um, for the World Bank uh, uh, very important uh, that we have been able to uh, uh, join these meetings uh, of APAC. Uh, the reason is uh, uh, a couple of, uh, for a couple of reasons. First, uh, the APIC setting is, is a unique one because it, it really reunites East Asia uh, with uh, key countries in the Western Ham, be it Canada, uh, US, but also Mexico, uh, uh, Peru, and Chile is quite important. And uh, it uh, uh, constitutes, uh, if you wish, uh, the most important uh, block, uh, economic block in the world, the APEC countries are counting for more than half of the world economy. And uh, I I as such, they are key drivers of growth. What I think what uh, the Filipino authorities in consultation with the member countries have done is uh, I think something uh, very interesting and important. First, uh, the growth agenda is on many multiple uh, uh, fora uh, because the uh, world economy is still uh, working its way out and uh, towards uh, sustained growth. And uh, so um, you see that this agenda really touches on how uh, growth can be made stronger, more sustainable, inclusive, and resilient. So it touches on many, many key areas uh, 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 which will matter uh, for the world economy. What is more is, of course, that uh, this is being formulated uh, by a region, East Asia, that has been the leader in economic growth for quite some time now, uh, accounting for probably uh, for a large percentage of world growth. Uh, only China uh, accounted for 30, 40 percent uh, of world growth in the last couple of years taken together with ASEAN countries probably gets you to 50% or so. So it's very important. The growth rates are also uh, enviable in the other parts of the world, uh, but that doesn't mean that that is enough. Uh, what uh, I think that uh, the, 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 the discussions have shown is that uh, growth is an important precondition but it is not enough. It needs also to be inclusive and sustainable. And there, um, uh, particularly also yesterday, in its elaboration, President Aquino touched upon this, that it is very important to make sure that um, while uh, the poverty re uh, reduction in East Asia has been unprecedented, uh, in terms of reducing so quickly extreme poverty. We should not uh, hide the fact that while the hundreds of uh, millions of people were lifted out of poverty, there are still challenges. And they translate into uh, also still big numbers. 100 million people are still living in extreme poverty in East Asia. 250 million people are living between $1.25 and $2 a day. And another 450 million people are living between $2 and $3 a day. So about 800 million people are living less than $3 a day. That's about 40% of uh, the East Asian uh, uh, population. So that is a major challenge that th these people will uh, uh, also participate in the benefits of growth. And while they have 
to, to some extent, you are seeing uh, with trends of increasing inequality that the benefits of growth are, are not equally shared and certainly the riches are doing better than the lowest 40%. So that is a call to make uh, uh, growth incl a more inclusive F1 go forward. The World Bank uh, has always emphasized this, that we need to, to, to make uh, sure that growth benefits all. And uh, in that context have in, uh, emphasized that policy matters. And policy matters in the infrastructure area. Why is that so? Because while people are talking also a lot about that there are gaps in infrastructure, uh, we see the hundreds of millions of infrastructure gaps translated into very concrete numbers that affect uh, many people. For example, 142 uh, 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 million households, or over 700 million people, have no access to electricity. 600 million people in uh, developing East Asia don't have access to adequate sanitation. So that agenda is big, including for infrastructure, because good infrastructure could actually provide very important support for those people. Um, in addition, the education agenda is key for the long-term growth, and we are emphasizing that uh, education should be seen from early childhood over primary, secondary, and then um, university education or college education to lifelong learning. And the reason that one needs to take that comprehensive uh, approach because the structural transformations in East Asia and elsewhere in the world are dynamic. The labor force has to continue to adjust to these new challenges, and therefore the education agenda is key. And finally, we need to look at social protection systems, be it health insurance, pension schemes, but also for those who have been left behind, how can we provide support through conditional cash transfer systems that can actually provide important support uh, for the poorest. These are targeted uh, 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 programs that require uh, mothers to send their kids to school, as well as make sure that the kids get the regular health checkups that they deserve and need. And uh, here, I think also President Aquino mentioned that yesterday, uh, uh, this uh, has been uh, rather successful also in, in the Philippines with a very significant scale up of coverage from less than around 800,000 households to right now 4.4 million households. So about 20% of the population in the Philippines. So these are important uh, 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 you know, factors in, in the social agenda. So I think that what we have found encouraging in this whole debate uh, uh, here uh, in APAC is that uh, this social agenda is uh, clearly included and uh, we are very encouraged to see that. Apart from that the other pillars that uh, are being uh, mentioned uh, are uh, also of key importance and uh, the World Bank stands ready to be an active participant in the implementation of this action plan on both sides of the Pacific, be it uh, here in East Asia, but also in Latin America. Let me stop here and take some more questions. Okay, uh, so we are now opening the floor to questions. Again, for those who have questions, uh, please raise your hand. Allow me to acknowledge you. Proceed to the microphone and identify your name and your affiliation. So who wants to throw the first question? Okay, um, while they're uh, formulating their questions, uh, Mr. Trotzenberg, APEC is uh, a venue for sharing of best practices. So what are some of the best practices so far that are being discussed, um, um, So, say from uh, developing economies, on how to address inequality? And is the Philippines, uh, or um, can the Philippines also share some best practices in that area? 
Well, uh, starting with, um, uh, with uh, some of the best practices in, in, in the social areas is certainly that uh, uh, the Philippines uh, benefit also from the experience of conditional cash transfer in other parts, in particular in Latin America. Uh, some of it, uh, the member countries uh, in, in APAC have similar programs. I'm thinking here in Mexico of uh, the Oportunidades of Chile Solidario in, uh, in, uh, in Chile, uh, as well as in Peru, or uh, the uh, fami uh, Familias en Acción in Colombia. And I think that has helped uh, uh, the, the Philippines uh, in its design. I think what uh, is here important is that um, uh, this system has been uh, scaled up quickly, but has also been interestingly combined with other programs like the Community Driven Development Projects, uh, and I think is, is actually managed uh, uh, fairly tightly. It is uh, only covering uh, half a percent of, per, uh, percent of GDP. That's about the norm, what you're seeing elsewhere. Um, I think what we are also seeing is that there is a lot of transparency on this, as well as an active promotion of the empowerment and participation by the local communities. I think that has important values. Uh, I think that uh, this will be certainly also a key ingredient when, uh, uh, when people are going to look at the Philippine system, uh, how, how communities are involved in, in, in these uh, in uh, programs. I myself took um, um, on Wednesday time off to travel with uh, uh, Secretary Dinky Soliman to uh, Bourbon uh, here in, in Cebu uh, to see firsthand how the program is implemented and how communities are using both con the conditional cash transfer systems as well as the community-driven development projects. And I think that is actually something uh, that is important to share because I think these programs have shown also in Latin America that it, it helps uh, to, um, uh, to at least um, in, in Latin America improve some, some uh, of, of the income distribution. So that is good. There are also things on best practices what are being uh, discussed in the APAC context. I just want to mention a couple of things. Fiscal transparency, very important. Uh, here, uh, over the last couple of years, um, Phil the Philippines has uh, developed itself as a leader and a very proactive champion of this. And, and that is also being recognized internationally uh, as a promoter. I think that is very good uh, that this topic is, is, is uh, uh, prominently uh, uh, mentioned. I think on the infrastructure, we were just talking with ministers about this, is um, uh, infrastructure uh, is, uh, tends to be uh, uh, dominated by the public sector. In East Asia, actually, in relative terms, uh, the Philippines has more, relatively more private sector participation, and people are struggling to get the private sector involved in this. I think people may want to look also at the Philippine experience on PPPs, how, how the Philippines has succeeded to attract uh, private sector capital on this. Um, disaster risk is another uh, a case in point which is extremely important in general for East A Asia because it is a vulnerable region for uh, uh, repeated uh, natural disasters. I think there, uh, um, uh, through uh, the unfortunate experiences, including uh, Yolan, um, I think that the Philippines has been trying to, to, to think also differently about building back better, but also being more resilient and, and use or seek new ways of innovative financing to deal with these issues. So there are a lot of those things that uh, are uh, being introduced in the debates. The beauty of the system is, of course, when you have quite a few member countries participating, 21, uh, that one can actually learn mutually from different experiences. And then that is being complemented by participation of uh, the multilateral community. And perhaps you can share, to what extent uh, should governments be spending on uh, conditional cash transfers to ensure that it remains prudent? Because there is a school of thought saying that uh, 
too much a reliance on uh, dole outs can uh, may promote uh, dependency. Dependence. Uh, that's an uh, I I that's an important uh, area where people are uh, always debating this. I think first of all you need to look at in relative terms what people are spending. Uh, uh, half a percentage point of GDP uh, in general um, uh, is, uh, if you looked at in the international experience, that is not excessive. Uh, so you 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 don't want to have it uh, too generous that uh, that it, uh, it act as a di as a as a disincentive to work, but you also want to have a sufficiently substantial that indeed it helps particularly children. I think you need always to look behind these conditional cash transfers. You need to see children. And those who have had not a chance to get the adequate uh, medical attention or uh, to get into school or stay into school. It's extremely important that if you want to fight effectively exclusion, you need to make sure that the kids who are growing up in, in disadvantageous uh, situations have a fighting chance uh, to succeed. And, and, and certainly, uh, conditional cash transfer programs have proven uh, uh, more successful. The, uh, the, in the absence of this, you are also talking about denying a whole lot of uh, kids a future. And I think that uh, uh, was one of the, the big things debated in, in also in Latin America, how one actually uh, reaches uh, these poor sections and give them a better chance. Thank you. Yes, Kai. Uh, sir, um, good afternoon. I'm Kai Ordinario from Business Mirror. I just wanted to ask you, because um, in April, the World Bank released the East Asia um, report. And um, you projected that the Philippines will grow by 6.5%. So given that the country's first semester performance was only 5.3%, will you be reducing your forecast in light of that? And then the second question is on the CCTs. Um, the conditional cash transfer program, um, the government is, um, has proposed, I think, a new project for the for funding by the World Bank on on the CCTs, um, what's the status, and will you likely uh, approve that this year? Um, on on the second one, yes, we are preparing an, uh, a project on this. Yes, we are uh, uh, supportive. Um, um, I do not approve the project. I support that we do this. Uh, our board uh, is ultimately approving the project. So. Um, uh, but uh, from the management, absolutely, uh, we are. Uh, we have had an excellent uh, cooperation. I think uh, we see this uh, as uh, as an important uh, uh, element in the social policies in the in the in the Philippines, and uh, we are uh, supportive and preparing uh, this project with a view. Then, once it is negotiated, that we bring it. Uh, to our board uh, for final consideration and approval. On, on the second part of is, is as you know, uh, uh, the uh, East Asian economic updates are being presented uh, twice yearly. Uh, one uh, usually at, the, at the just before the spring meetings in April and one uh, just before the uh, 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 annual meetings. So this year we will present, uh, I think again, on, if, if I'm not mistaken, on, on, on Monday, the 5th of uh, October, our economic update on this. And we are uh, you know, going through all the countries. Um, um, as I said already to some of your colleagues, uh, that it would be a bit premature that I uh, tell you uh, if every detail of, of that economic update, it will be there on the 5th of October. Um, and we were going to look on it. But one thing I think is important to stress is that whatever the re uh, uh, we are looking at, uh, at, uh, at all the countries, overall, you need to keep this uh, that uh, in, 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 in East Asia, uh, the economic performance have been uh, very, very good. That doesn't mean that all those countries ha don't have their challenges. Every country has their challenges, and you have to keep the focus on this. 
I think with particular reference to, to uh, um, uh, the Philippines, I think it is fair to say that, um, uh, you know, if you look at the overall economic management, then uh, certainly the, the, the authorities have done an, uh, a, a very good job in, in, in uh, allowing for uh, uh, prudent macroeconomic policies that have ended up reducing inflation, reducing the deficit, uh, um, reducing the debt levels, as well as uh, having an increase in the, uh, in the international reserve. So uh, uh, that uh, is, is, is important because ultimately markets are looking at the conduct also of, of, of macro policies. What the Philippines cannot influence is that it is not alone in the world economy. And the world economy has different factors that, that either influences positively or negatively an economy like the Philippines. What uh, is, is important is that, uh, uh, you know, um, there are things regionally, uh, it depends on economic growth in the OECD markets, it is regional growth that uh, affects uh, performance. Uh, commodity prices affecting uh, a country, as well as here, uh, 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 re uh, remittances. But if you dare also look, remittances are coming uh, from, uh, from a major markets like in the OECD. Uh, you see also the business processing operations, the very strong operations. So you see a, a lot of things also that are very strong. So we'll come back to you, but I think uh, the way we see uh, uh, the Philippines economy that overall, despite, despite the fact that the world economy is, is still not uh, a growing at rates that uh, people are hoping for, that uh, uh, the Philippines in, in relative uh, terms has done uh, very well. Okay, thank you. Um, who wants to ask the next question? I am yes, please. Uh, Chris from Dow Jones. Just to which uh, Chris Laranya from Dow Jones. Um, just want to know uh, if the um, changes in the currency of the Chinese um, government and. Uh, the upcoming changes in the U.S. interest rates, as, lo as well as the changes in the uh, commodity prices, will be play a big role in when you finally announce the revised uh, projections for global growth and uh, and the growth for this region. I didn't understand the changes in the uh, Chinese government. Yes, I haven't uh, seen changes the in the, the Chinese government. So, no, uh, sorry, the devaluation of the yuan. Okay. Well, I, I look, again, if, if you, uh, it's always popular to point out uh, to the Chinese currency, I think uh, if you actually look uh, worldwide uh, what is happening with currencies, uh, there have been major changes uh, uh, in the OECD uh, uh, currencies vis-a-vis -vis the US dollars. I'm thinking here of uh, the Euro uh, dollar exchange rate, Canadian dollar, Australian dollar, um, you see uh, the yen uh, a dollar exchange rate. Uh, there have been uh, major changes that are far larger than uh, wha what you have been seeing uh, that happening with the uh, Chinese currency with the, with the U.S. dollar, including then on uh, the uh, um, uh, exchange rates here in the regions. You see uh, uh, much larger changes uh, uh, led by. Uh, 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 Malaysia. So I think what we are doing is uh, we are looking at uh, with our uh, individual country economies and our chief economist at all factors that uh, are, uh, are affecting uh, growth. Uh, I think exchange rates are only one ingredient of, of more. There are domestic uh, factors, there are external factors and those will uh, be taken into account to come to an overall uh, view. So uh, we try to be as, as comprehensive as, as, as possible. Okay, thank you. Are there any more questions? Yes. Uh, 
Good afternoon, uh, Mikhail Flores of Business World. Sir, I understand this morning development partners discussed the regional economic outlook and uh, policy challenges uh, for members of the Asia Pacific Economic Cooperation. Um, in terms of uh, outlook for the medium term, uh, what's the general uh, consensus of the ministers as well as the development partners on the growth trajectory and direction of the region and also what are the challenges in terms of uh, reforms and uh, risks to growth uh, moving forward. Thank you. Um, uh, the way it was done uh, today was uh, that uh, our colleague from the IMF provided an overview. Um, I don't know, I probably think that also he uh, has addressed you or will address you uh, on this, so uh, I would leave that uh, to him. I, I talked about the, 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 uh, the social agenda, particularly uh, uh, as it pertains to outlook. Um, what I would uh, just uh, want to say is, uh, and I said that in the in introductory remarks, that um, economic growth has been a challenge uh, over the last couple of years in major parts of, of the main parts of, of the world economy. I think the exception has been, in relative terms, uh, East Asia. Uh, if you look at uh, how uh, the U.S. economy grew for a lot, uh, most years, uh, there is right now that the U.S. economy is growing more strongly. The euro area is a bit stronger. But you see also uh, that uh, while now uh, growth is a bit better uh, in, 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 in the United States and in, um, in, uh, in the eurozone, uh, it is uh, markedly weaker in, in Canada, entering into recession. We which went to uh, a, v a period of very strong growth. And then in uh, many of the emerging markets, uh, be it uh, uh, from Russia to, uh, to uh, uh, Brazil, that they are in recession. So what you are seeing is what some of the positive factors and one are offset by other factors in other countries. And, and that has led that uh, uh, overall economic growth for the world economy was, uh, was adjusted uh, slightly downwards in, 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 in our uh, uh, economic forecast in the middle of the years. And we do again the updates for the, uh, for, for, for the annual meetings on this. Um, uh, be it the G20 statement, be it here, I think the growth agenda will uh, be center stage uh, uh, for this. Uh, what I think is, is good and very welcome news in, in the APEC context that it doesn't touch only on, 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 on the, uh, you know, the quantitative aspect of growth, but also on the qualitative aspects, particularly as it pertains to inclusion and sustainability, uh, particularly also the environmental sustainability. And I think, uh, that's very good news. Okay, perhaps we can accommodate uh, one or two more last questions if there are still any. Okay, um, I guess uh, there's no more questions. Uh, Mr. Axel, for your closing statement, perhaps uh, I, I, I should ask you this. Um, for sure, economies already have their own individual um, programs to address inequality. So what does... Uh, a regional initiative like the Cebu Action Plan has to offer in terms of accelerating um, the goal of uh, inclusive growth? Well, particularly with social programs, you will not be, uh, you will have to have that well in, uh, embedded in the national context. So every country will need to adjust uh, their individual programs according to the national settings, to uh, um, uh, to how the, uh, the, the poverty profile is. Um, uh, most of these poor programs need to be
and and that's different in, 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 in uh, across the APEC uh, membership. Um, secondly, uh, it is important that uh, this uh, this community, given that it com uh, you know unites uh, uh, Asian countries with uh, uh, countries from the Americas, that makes it uh, unique and makes also a very powerful knowledge exchange that uh, can in, uh, learn from, uh, from Latin American experience or North American experiences with also the Asian experiences. And I think that is actually a very nice uh, uh, angle um, uh, that uh, having attended many meetings uh, in, in other settings, I haven't seen so much. And then I think there is a huge potential on that uh, uh, to learn uh, from each other and also uh, to see how uh, these policies can be done better. I think that what unites them in terms of concrete action is certainly the, the infrastructure agenda. The infrastructure agenda is extremely important, not only in East Asia, but also in Latin America. And, and, and th th that is twofold. It is uh, that the infrastructure gap is large. Uh, if you take it um, for all developing countries together, they are investing today about a trillion dollar per year. Yet the needs are two trillion dollars. So it's double. The private sector participation in the infrastructure currently in all these developing countries is less than 200 million, so less than 20%. And it is less than 10% of what is needed. So how do you do that? I mean, uh, there, are, there are public challenges in terms of financing. How do you uh, mobilize more the private sector on this? How do you make uh, PPPs more effective? That are very concrete questions that uh, concerns uh, both on both sides, the Pacific part of the APEC membership as well as the economies uh, uh, on the other side and the Americans. So I think there, by having these exchanges as well as potential follow-up, uh, that will be helpful. And the follow-up, uh, for example, from the World Bank is concrete. We um, uh, are going to expand our uh, Singapore office to make this a real uh, infrastructure hub uh, with a, a lot of emphasis on PPPs and private sector participation, including with our private sector arms, uh, the International Finance uh, Corporation, IFC, and MIGA, the, the insurance uh, guarantee agency. Th those will be, the, and we are looking at how we um, uh, contribute to uh, build a stronger uh, pipeline of bankable projects. Uh, to that end, we have created a global infrastructure facility that is meant to help prepare uh, projects. So we hope to do that uh, uh, as well in, uh, in East Asia, so that one can not only uh, um, look at uh, comparative experiences, but that we are also uh, heavily engaged in action, namely to contribute uh, in the design of this project as well as in the financing and then ultimately execution of these projects. And uh, we think we can play a lead role. To date in Asia, uh, the World Bank is already investing only in the infrastructure area over $10 billion per year. We have an active portfolio of close to $60 billion in Asia, uh, only infrastructure, not, so not talking about uh, um, the whole health and education and social areas. Um, and uh, we are uh, set to, uh, to step up our engagement in these areas. Okay, thank you very much. So that uh, formally ends this round of press conference. Um, we appreciate uh, Mr. Chotzenberg for gracing uh, this uh, media activity. To our friends from the media, thank you. I will see you at uh, the Joint uh, Finance Minister's press conference at around 4 or 4.30 p.m. at Shang. Thank, thank you. Very you. Much.